Jacob, I'm here. and we're going for a drive. Subaru BRZ. Sport tech, no launch control, it's manual. That's so fun. Horsepower and torque. 228 horsepower, 184 pound feet of torque from a 2.4 liter four cylinder boxer engine. Exact same as the 86, correct? Yes, the 86 is the twin of this car and Subaru likes to say that this is a totally different vehicle, different suspension tuning. It basically isn't even related to the Toyota. I don't think they're going that far, but they are saying that it has different suspension and stuff. Well, Yuri, I will find out through Cliche Corner, but I've already found out in advance that they're actually not lying about that. This they're, car actually feels totally different than the 86. Wh what were they saying in their marketing that this is different than the 86? Well, they did all of the suspension tuning themselves. They actually did some engine tuning themselves as Bro, well. Bro, it's their car. Yeah, I'm just saying different from the 86. They did, uh, the suspension is actually totally different. There's different mounting points. We have aluminum front knuckles, like all the kind of stuff that Savage Geese gets excited about. And, and what's the point of all of those changes? In order to prioritize grip rather than goonery as the 86 does, let's see if we have more grip through Cliche Corner. And uh, we actually do, like it doesn't, it, it will oversteer. It's very neutral though in comparison to the 86. Like throttle oversteer, there. There's a but lot. There's a lot less of it. A in this. lot less. Like you have to you have to bury your foot more into the throttle. Use the steering a little bit more. The steering is even noticeably lighter, maybe because of those aluminum front knuckles. But it it is different, which is nice to actually see. If you're pushing it, but if you're just putting around normal, like I'm a dude who wants a rear wheel drive manual car instead of a front wheel drive car because I don't have a family you might not notice the difference. No, it's really only when you push it, that's when you notice the differences. The suspension comfort is the same, I would say. 86 driving, this driving every day to work, I would say the same. And on track, man, I think I had a little more fun with like the 86. Fun, fun. Fun. But this, I think, would be a touch faster around a lap, I think. And then to talk more about this compared to its 86 twin, it has pretty much exact same interior, except a ton more red stitching and the exact same infotainment, which is the one that we love from the 86 because it's a Subaru infotainment. Yeah, volume tuning, all the hard buttons we want. Yeah, and then it's like the nice normal color-coded touchscreen. We've got Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Sirius XM, it rewinds Sirius XM and does tune mix. And if you'd like your own free three-month trial of Sirius XM satellite radio, click one of the links below. And if you don't have a car, you can still get it for just your phone. Yeah, download the app and use it on the app. And more similarities with the 86, it's the same drivetrain, like identical, they didn't touch anything. They say that they did different tuning on the engines, but like, I don't notice a difference. We drove them basically back to back because we had the 86 last week and realistically it feels the same. Yeah, spending a week with this, I still don't change my mind that I would take the Miata over both of these. Interesting. I, th I think it's something about the shifter, like it's a little too long. I really like the six speed. It's an, it's an all right six speed, but like the whole shifter in general is too long. Good thing everyone's gonna modify the crap out of these and you just get a short shifter for this. But it's still like nothing to really complain about in today's day and age. No, it's fantastic. You still have an LSD out back. It's still rear wheel drive, still lightweight sports car, still very affordable. This is actually even more affordable than the comparative GR86. Basically every trim is about $2,000-ish cheaper than the 86. There's a lot of value there. So tsp.truecar.com, check out if you can get your best deal on either of these two. Or on a Miata. Yeah. Or, I mean, or on a used 370Z maybe. Exactly, because that's basically the same money at this point. But with this engine, it likes to rev a lot. So if I downshift into second and seven and a half thousand, it's just, it's fun to ring this out. Whereas like a 370, a used one, you would still have to ring it out, but I, I feel like that upper RPM isn't as fun as it is in this. But everything else about a 370Z, I think is, is better feeling for me anyways. And then how did you like hitting red line? Did you like the uh, shift light? No, I, you can program that through the cluster. The shift light's nice, it flashes red, that's cool, but it's got the left to right when you're in track mode as opposed to the circle, which I actually like the left and right in track mode. Yeah, so I'm driving around in or traction off. off right now but I really like the circle tack and I realize why. It's because this is meant to be a track mode. You're not really meant to be dailying this with traction off because if you look at zero to four in the actual RPMs, you can't see much. So if you're daily driving it, you don't know from zero to one to two. I have driven this whole car by ear. Same here. And then but like the for a newer driver that's getting into this, 
you'd want to have the regular I mean, tack mode. If you were a new driver, you probably wouldn't start with traction off anyway. So I, I think it's okay. And then the pumped in audio, it makes sense because this car can be pretty quiet exhaust wise. Yeah. As much as it is annoying and I'd like to be able to turn it off, I think there is value to it, especially if you're tracking and like had a helmet on. Yeah, let's take a listen to the outside anyways. And fun fact, I was talking to Jack from Savage Geese. He deleted the intake sound because it's just like a, a thing that you unplug under the dash basically. And he went on track and he was just pinging off the limiter, not realizing it with the helmet because he couldn't hear it anymore. So now his solution is to spend more money on an exhaust. I mean, I still, I, I'd rather have an exhaust. Yeah, I, so would I, but like, this isn't the best sounding four cylinder with an exhaust. It so. would just be nice to have a switch. Cause like when I'm driving to work or something, if I had a real job, yeah. I don't need to hear so, so like the IS 500 where you just dial it over here. Uh, how about the Stinger where you can turn it off in the infotainment or yeah, something? Yeah, okay. So let's hear what it sounds like pumped in audio from the inside. Interesting. <laughs> All right. I, I get it, just give me the switch. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's get you into the driver's seat of this rear wheel drive. What is it? Boxer Rear Zenith, BRZ. I think that's what it stands for. Really? Yeah, I think so. That's cool. Yeah. Manual launch. But even off the line, it feels like it still wants to grip more, even though it has the same tires as the 86. And what would be the Continental recommended tire for an 86 or BRZ? The Extreme Contact Sport. It'd be way cooler with that. It would be. <laughs> so then as for other differences and similarities, looks-wise, the front end is obviously different and less aggressive, more smiley and anime. Yeah, it's kind of got an open face grill, but in a different shape. Where we don't have a mesh grill on this one, we have kind of like lines and stuff. I feel like it'd be harder for me to Photoshop it as a convincing long grill thumb. I think so, I'll but try, I mean, I'll you're gonna do it anyways, yeah. And then headlights. They're slightly different. Same overall shape, but different part of the DRLs that lights up. Yeah, you don't get it going all the way up the side. And then anything else with the front end? I mean, there's that Subaru badge instead of the Toyota one. Yes, other than that, it's identical. I think the Toyota front end looks better. And then from the side, it's exactly the same, kind of. Yeah, it's actually identical from the side. There's no changes. The only thing we're missing is you can't get the duckbill spoiler, which I guess you can kind of see from the side. Yeah, so you can't get that in any trim on the BRZ where it's only available on the premium trim of the 86. And I would highly recommend that or save the $2,000 if you're gonna buy this and just get one of those spoilers for this. And then the taillights are very similar shape, but I feel like on the BRZ, it's just the outline where on the 86, it allows bleed to come in. So it looks more Aston Martin-ish on the 86. Yeah, I feel like there's a minor difference, but there is one. And then the diffuser, the exhaust, the rest of that stuff, exactly the same. Identical. So overall, I prefer the GR86 looks. As do I, as long as you don't get it in blue because only this car should be sold in blue. <laughs> just get it in blue confuse people. And then we got the same wheels as the 86 too. Yes, except these are uh, gunmetal rather than black. And I was saying this would look cool in gold, but I guess we need to wait for a BRZ SDI trim. Nah, that's never gonna happen. They they killed off the SDI, so. Yeah, eh, yeah. eh whatever. Just paint your wheels gold. This is still a cool car. And, <laughs> yeah. and like, there's nothing wrong with it. Whichever one you can get, whichever well, the, one's cheaper or whatever. They may do a TS trim like they did in the previous generation. Wouldn't know. Never got to drive it. But it existed. All right, I guess I should go through Cliche Corner with it. Yeah, you go the other direction than I did. Nice and grippy. Yeah. Don't you feel the steering's a little lighter? I, I really wasn't paying that much attention, so they kind of still both feel the same, but it definitely doesn't want to slip out as easy. No. Maybe when we do a track comparison, back-to-back -back GR86 versus BRZ. And then we can get a lap time down in both? I think that would be fun. It would be. And then interior-wise, nice seats. Yeah, very cool. feel the same, I think. They right? feel the same. I think they're just, they look a little different with the red stitching. The back seat has barely enough room for me or you, but somebody in the comments of our 86 versus Miata video said, I've got a kid and a dog, and for that, the back seats are perfect. I would agree. So if you're in that situation or a bachelor, perfect amount of rear seat room, you can fold the seats down, fit a lot through the trunk as a pass-through, but. Yeah, four it's, tires. It's not a hatch. No. And I was thinking about, this feels a lot like my old 240SX. I think I said that in the old BRZ video that we reviewed too, of Chris's BRZ. Sure did. But like having a hatch would be so much cooler. It would be, but it also ends up weighing more. Who cares? Yeah. Hatch life, you can add more stuff. Add more horsepower. Supercharge, turbo it, blow it up. 
nitrous in. And then on the inside of this, we have the handbrake on the inside towards the driver, which is pretty cool for handbrake turns. Exactly, just like the 86. And then we got heated seats with hard buttons down here. We've got our traction control above that. And then we've got a bunch of hard buttons for climate still. Everything about it is still good. Some people in our 86 Miata video were saying that the infotainment has got like a bezel around it and that it looks old. But you know what? At this, this point, this is the right amount of dated. Because look at the new 7 Series uh, in, infotainment and interior and screens. And they got a screen where your um, window yeah, controls are. Oh like, my God. You've gone too far. Yes. But you said everything's good. I have one objection. Boom! Oh, cup holders. Yeah, the cup holders in this are awful. Like this, the position of them, and it doesn't really fit a small cup. Sort of does. I know a lot of the world doesn't drink drinks while uh, driving at all times, but for me, man, it sucks compared to the Miata. Yeah. So that's the only part that really sucks. Uh, visors. Oh, visors. Three, two, one. Fail. Fail. Okay, so that sucks two parts. as well. So with pretty much everything out of the way, I think it's time we get to the price. The Sport Tech trim comes in at $32,495. Canadian. And like I said earlier, every trim in the BRZ is about $2,000 cheaper than it is in the 86. If I had to pick between the BRZ and the 86, I would pay the extra two grand and get the 86 because of the driving feel, the looks, and only the 86 was the straight pipes car of the year last year, not the BRZ. So that's got major points for it too. Wow, that is true. I will objectively state that if you're looking for the car with more grip out of the box, this is the one to get, just hands down. If you're objectively looking for the one with more goonery, more sliding, more fun, I would go with the GR86 is the one, and my personal choice would be the GR86. But I mean, you wear down tires a little bit and then this will slide just as much as an 86. You go on I a, disagree on a because of day. all the different suspension tuning. Like, they have different spring rates, different mounting points, aluminum stuff that you just don't get on that 86. Yeah, maybe if you're trying to be like a serious drifter, but if you just want to slide a little bit here, there, especially if you're driving this in winter, which it's totally fine to drive these cars in winter as long as you have winter tires. Yep. I think it's a pretty even choice. So let us know what you think in the comments. Which one would you pick? GR86 or a BRZ or surprise contender used 370Z or just a Miata? 370Z. Non-convertible. I'd go with a garbage Fox body that you can buy for $5,000 and then dump $40,000 into it to make it more expensive than this one. Yeah, you've been driving that lately? Yeah, it's the best. <laughs> <laughs> that was the fire steering. That's great. <laughs>